Hello, my name is Eric Butkinen. Thank you for joining me. Today I'm talking about resting in stillness. When you're talking about self-realization, enlightenment, awakening, or any other term, pick your term, I would say the number one thing you can do is be still, silent, and fully aware. And so being still, resting in stillness is critical. And that is something we should do regularly, daily, maybe even multiple times a day. Resting in stillness, the practice of it, so to speak, will also help you identify any efforts, motions, or agitation, and you can stop doing those. And so you ever become more and more still. Because it is amazing and how much motion, effort, activity, agitation that we do on a conscious and even subconscious level. To a certain extent, it kind of is like uh, many years ago, I worked in a bank. I was, you know, coding checks, you know, I was doing night processing and I was doing backups. And at the very end of the night, after hours of working in this room, my computer would shut down. And so often the silence was striking as everything went silent. Because, I mean, up until that point, you, there was a sense that the room was quiet because there's no one there. There's no one else in the office. It was just me. And if I wasn't doing anything, yeah, you know, there was a hum of computers and stuff. But things seemed pretty silent. But when those computers shut down, the silence was startling. Likewise, I would say after awakening enlightenment, the inner stillness is surprising. And in contrast, in memory, you just don't realize how much effort, agitation, motion, activity we are doing all the time. And it's only when it all stops is the stillness profound, is it deep. And towards the end of this video, we're probably going to, we're going to do kind of a, uh, a guided meditation of sorts, but I think I want to dive into a little bit on the how and tips on um, resting and stillness. Because kind of a, a, an immediate trap it is people will make efforts to try to become still. And of course, the more effort you put in to become still, the more you deviate because you're adding motion. You're exactly acting contrary to stillness. And so the question becomes, well, how do you become still then? <laughs> well, it's identifying the motion, the activity, the agitation, and ceasing that. It's kind of like if you're holding a jar of water with sand and, and mud mixed in, and you're, you're, you're kind of shaking it and jostling it and keeping it, the water agitated, and so the sand and mud is floating in the water. Well, how do you allow the, the sediment to settle to the bottom? Well, you have to eliminate all motion, all agitation. And so the easiest way is to put the jar down. Don't touch it. <laughs> and it will settle on its own. And that's because everything tends to grind down to a halt on its own. Stillness. It could be kind of considered a natural state. Things will tend to be still on its own unless you add energy and activity and, and motion to it. If there is a round ball on the floor and it's just sitting there, it will tend to just sit there. It's not suddenly going to move. You have to add energy to it. You have to give it a push. And then it'll start moving. And it will move as long as that energy lasts because of friction and, and other forces. But it'll grind to a halt on its own. And so what we want to take advantage of is the th things tending to grind to a halt on its own. You don't want to add additional energy or effort to the equation. You just want to remove any energy or motion being added 
and in the leaving it alone state, allow it to come to rest and grind to a halt on its own. And so likewise, when we are trying to rest in stillness, we need to be aware of what's going on, internally in particular. What we are feeling, you know, what's going on, because they will point to potential motions, movements, energy being added to the equation. For example, to rest in stillness, we have to let go of or cease all clinging and repelling. If you're clinging, you are adding energy to, the, to this equation. If you're repelling, you're adding energy to this equation. <laughs> Only when you have ceased clinging and repelling may it come to rest on its own. <laughs> but if you're clinging, and that which, and if you're clinging on to that which is temporary and moving and changing, which everything is, it will tend to put, you know, it will tend to drag you along. It will add energy to the equation. If you're repelling, well, you're taking in that energy as you're trying to push back against things coming. Let's say, let's say you're just sitting there and a dog barks. Well, if you don't like the dog barking and you think of it as an interruption or something that shouldn't be, you're resisting it. And this inner resistance to what is happening is a adding motion or energy to the equation. It's, it's an agitation. <laughs> and as long as that exists, it's keeping things from rusting in stillness. It's keeping things from becoming as still as it can be. And so the what to do is ceasing to make effort, cease doing. It is, it is the, the, the letting go of such things, wherever you identify or spot it. Now, I think we should do kind of a guided seated meditation of sorts. So kind of get comfortable. Now this is going to be kind of from an intermediate level because I'm very quickly going to go over the fact that as you're seating, seated, you shouldn't be thinking. Thinking is a doing. Thinking is an agitation of the mind, and you want to be calm. You want to, you want to have a calm mind, a non-agitated mind. And there are other videos that uh, talk about stillness of mind and silencing the mind and no mind and uh, various ways of, you know, being present. All of this stuff you can look into those videos on how to quiet the mind. But I'm going to assume that on some level here, you can just sit without thinking because you are no longer, you know, projecting mentally into past and future. You've let that go and just, you can be still. But as you're just sitting here, first we're going to take a deep inhale, hold it for the count of three, and then exhale in kind of a whew kind of way. And you could even tense the body slightly on the hold. But what, what this is doing is it's kind of a letting everything go and resting. And I, sometimes it helps prime the pump a bit. So. <sighs> And you just kind of 
let it rest in stillness. And as you're resting in stillness, you're not expecting anything to happen. <laughs> you're not looking for something else to happen. That kind of expectation is an agitation. Simply the now is the enough is enough. And so without expecting or eager for what is to come, <clears throat> just just rest deeply in what is. And in resting in what is, whatever it is, watch for any desire or wanting to manipulate the experience. Because we're not trying to manipulate the experience. That is just another subtle way of trying to make efforts to influence, which is adding energy and movement to the equation. It's not being still. To rest in stillness, you just need to cease the doings and efforting. And so don't try to manipulate anything. Don't try to manipulate the experience, what the senses are aware of. If there's dogs barking or bells ringing or whatever don't repel it don't manip don't try to manipulate it just allow it to be you're allowing what's going on around you to wash over you and through you basically you're no longer adding any resistance to the experience no, nor are you keeping yourself separate from the experience. Just allow everything to wash over and through. And so everything can continue on, however it's continuing on. And yet there's a stillness there. An ever deepening stillness as it comes to rest and you rest in that stillness. And as you rest in that stillness, notice the deep peace. Notice if there's any conflict or struggle. Because if there's a lack of peace, that means there's an agitation. There is some effort being made to resist The deep stillness is inherently deep peace. And so whatever is getting in the way of peace, all struggle, conflict, fighting with yourself, the world, whatever, it all must be let go of. It must be surrendered. You surrender the fight. You surrender the struggle. You surrender the conflict. And you just allow it to settle and come to a deep peace and rest in stillness. And things can continue to calm. Now also notice when you're breathing in and breathing out, on both ends there may be a pause, or at least there's a, you know, however short it may be. 
but there's a moment where you're not breathing in, you're not breathing out. And those are moments when the body is even more still than when it's breathing, because breathing sometimes is a motion that sometimes I think people find initially might get in the way, but breathing really doesn't get in the way of stillness. But to find stillness initially, it may help to watch the, the ends, both ends of the breath in and out. For when there is no breathing in, breathing out on both ends, there is a, a deeper stillness of body. And so there's no thought. And at the ends of the breath, there's very little movement in body. And with the total lack of motion going on, it may be easier to spot <laughs> any effort, motion, or agitation that may still be present. It'll give you something to look at. And so as we're resting in stillness, notice the total lack of discontentment and the deep contentment. Now, if there's any disagreement with this, and there is some discontentment, that is an agitation, a resistance against, which is disturbing stillness. And so, let that go. Letting it go Forgiving, accepting, surrendering. These are all pointers, but they are all efforts, or better yet, removing of efforts to hold on to things. For if there was no resistance and denial in the first place, there'd be no need to accept. If there was no conflict and struggle, if there was no fighting, there'd be no reason to surrender because it's already peace. <laughs> These pointers of acceptance, surrender, forgiving, they're all pointers in the letting things go, removing the effort, letting it return to stillness. And so, remember this, there is no seeking here. You don't need to seek, you don't need to do. You are just resting, coming to rest in stillness. And in this, you may find that other things may come apparent because some people will ask, well, how do you abide in self? Well, if you're completely still, if you're completely resting in stillness, you're automatically abiding in self. Some people will ask, I'm having difficulty Abiding in silence. How do I abide in silence? Well, what is silence other than the absence of noise, the absence of agitation in the air? Silence is really just another version of stillness. And the problem is, is you can't try to abide in st stillness or silence. Abiding is a pointer. But that's almost why I like the, the idea or term resting in stillness better. 
rest coming to rest in stillness resting in stillness is even less effort in terms of what somebody can think of and is abiding in silence abiding in silence sounds like you're doing something resting in stillness means you're not doing anything but resting in stillness is abiding in silence it is the same thing there's no expectation there's no trying to get anywhere I'm not trying to get anything done I'm not trying to get anything out of this If you're trying to get something out of this, that's a subtle manipulation. That's an agitation, once again. What I'm suggesting is we're trying to come to a complete stop. To be totally still. Profoundly still. And as you regularly do this, you will encounter your own efforts, activities, agitations, the motion and energy that you're adding to the system. And you'll be able to slowly peel away or dr let it drop away. Cease doing it. Ever more still. Just resting in this. You don't need to do anything to rest in stillness. To try to do anything to rest in stillness is to add activity and agitation. It's not a doing. It's a ceasing to do. It's a not doing. It's a removing of effort and energy. Removing the effort and energy that keeps things in motion and then allowing it to grind to a halt on its own, not trying to stop anything directly. And as you progressively get better at this, the more advanced, you know, I, as I said, this is kind of intermediate because I was assuming you could sit without thinking. I guess the more advanced version would be learning or playing with this with small motions say looking at the hand and opening and closing it and even though the body moves staying in that deep feeling of stillness let the opening and closing of the hand be no different than a breeze brushing your cheeks or the sun and the photons hitting your body. There's constant change and motion in the world, physically, but this is the inner stillness that is underneath all activity and so while just kind of like you could sit in the woods and meditate and be perfectly still and silent and though you hear the trees rustling the leaves and you see the limbs moving you could still feel this deep stillness even with nature something about nature doesn't seem to contradict as much it's harder to, to get the same feeling say in in the city but in nature, the wind blows, the trees rustle, and you can still feel this deep stillness. And so that might be the intermediary step, but then you go to opening and closing the hand, which is no different than the wind or the trees rustling. It, the, the motion of the hand doesn't matter. And then maybe you can learn to go for a walk in the woods and feeling the deep, deep stillness, eliminating all agitation, all, all energy or motion or effort to just be here now, experiencing what's going on. 
and not clinging, not repelling, not thinking about it, not trying to get something out of it. You know, you're, you, you, you've removed all the various impetuses and energy and effort and you just get into this deep, deep silence, even though the body walks and the wind blows and it doesn't matter. And even today, I was sitting in my living room before I did this. And you could look at the wall and the same deep stillness is in the wall as in the hand, as in everything around. It's a singular stillness. Without other, because other is a separation, a pushing away, creating boundary. That is an agitation. <laughs> and so as you allow everything to wash over and through, there's this you'll find a vanishing of boundary in terms of you're not pushing things away and creating the separation and that subtle agitation that forms when when me and other arises of course this is tied into thought as well but all this kind of goes together it's something to play with um, you know depending where you're at you may be able to do some or none. It's hard to say, but something to play with. But it is vital. It is probably one of the keystones of non-duality is to rest in stillness, which is the exact same thing as abiding it in silence, which is exactly the same as abiding a self. It's all the same, but stillness, the idea of resting in stillness, I hope you can see, it requires no effort. You can't effort your way to stillness. And so you got to let go of all effort, all doing, all agitation, just ever more calm, letting things grind until they're still, letting things come to stillness and just reside in stillness. But if you got any questions, comments, please post below. But until next time, thank you much.